Hi everyone, so today we're going to look at how to solve an heat equation on a semi-infinite region. So this is my semi-infinite region where my um, there's one boundary condition given here Ft which is for which is when x equals to 0. Now when x approach infinity the solution is bounded okay by 0. Now we have also initial condition which is given as this. Okay so what we want to do here now we want to solve this uh, heat equation. Okay so if you look at this region here there are actually the two ways to do it. You can actually solve using Fourier sine or Fourier cosine transform. Okay, because Fourier sine and Fourier cosine transform are defined in the interval zero to infinity. But the best way is you can use Laplace transform. Okay, so to apply Laplace transform, you need to apply Laplace transform from the left equation. And Laplace transform the right equation. Okay, and then if you look at the Laplace transform definition, the the, La, the transformation using Laplace is with respect to t. Okay, if you look at Fourier transform, Fourier transform, we transform. With the variable with respect to x, okay. For Laplace, it is t. Now, now this Laplace transform of u t is given as s b q x s my my t become s minus u at x zero equals to alpha squared. So the u term is no effect, but it will be b q x s x s okay now what we do here we see that this is zero from the definition okay now we have s b q s x equals to alpha square u x x okay this is a second order equation so you can use the characteristic approach Okay, if I simplify this equation, I have alpha squared minus s b q x x equals to zero. Simplifying this, I have u x x x s minus s over alpha squared b q x s equals to zero now um this is you need to find the characteristic equation for the second order here so this will give me the solution where um m squared the characteristic equation equation which is m squared equals to s over alpha squared. m will be square root s plus minus square root s over alpha. Okay, so this will give me the general solution for this big U given by a s b square root s over alpha x plus b s e negative square root s over alpha x. Okay, which is good. Now, if we look at the condition, the first condition here, okay, we know that when x approach zero, okay, so let's 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 look at all the uh, the boundary condition given. So the boundary condition, we have u of zero t equals to f t. Okay, 
So the Laplace of u0 t equals to Laplace of f t. Okay, now this one will give me big U, 0 S. Now this one here will give me big S. Okay, this is one condition here. This is the one condition. Now we look at the interval given from 0 to infinity. So this is the condition for my um, A is 0. Now when when x approach infinity so when my x approach infinity what happened to this equation let's look at this equation first we have x approach infinity i have i have a s e infinity plus b s e negative infinity now we can see that this term here approach zero quickly Okay, so therefore, this will lead me with the equation A as E infinity equals to, what is E infinity? It's a very big number. Okay, it doesn't matter, but we can have A as equals to 0. So, plugging into the general solution, so we have U X as equal to my A 0, that will leave me with B as E negative. Negative square root f over alpha x. Now applying the second condition when x is 0, so we have u 0 s equals to f big f s. So I have b s now when x is 0, e to the power of 0 is 1. Therefore my b s equals to fx. So this gives my solution ux x equals to b cap s e square root s over alpha x. Okay, so this is my general solution obtained. Now this is not done because we want to find the solution of uxt. So what I need to do is to Laplace inverse of u x s that will give me Laplace inverse of f s Laplace inverse of e negative square root f over alpha x now this is actually the convolution you can use the convolution theorem but before we do that let, let's find let's look at here again so the inverse of this is my u x t and the inverse of me, this one is my ft. Now we need to find the inverse of this. Okay, let's call this my gt. Okay, this is my gt. Now, um, gt is given by Laplace inverse of e negative square root f over alpha x. Now we we know that we know that. Laplace of uh, from the Laplace table or the Laplace definition, but it is um, easier for us to use the table here. So from the Laplace transform table, it is given that the Laplace inverse of pi over a e negative two a square root s is given by e negative e squared over t over t3 over 2. Now this is the closest you can get from the Laplace table. This is from the Laplace transform table. Okay, so this is the closest we can get. Okay, the few quantification we want to find, the Laplace inverse of e negative 2a square root s so we don't want this term bring it here so i have a over square root pi e negative a squared over t over t3 over 2 
Okay, by comparison, the only equal, compare this with this, okay? These are the only term which is the same thing. Square root s, square root s. So I can let the rest. Okay, we can let 2a equals to x over alpha. So my a is x over 2 alpha. Okay, now substitute into this equation here. Let's call this equation a star. So I have Laplace inverse E negative, which is A is my X over 2 alpha square root S. This will give me my A is X over 2 alpha square root pi E negative A squared, which is X over 2 alpha square over t okay over t over t 3 over 2 okay so simplifying this we have e negative square root s x over 2 alpha look at this is the same equation that we want to get okay for for this equation except we have a 2 in front i forgot to add 2 here so 2 and 2 cancels out cancels out now this is the one we want to find now simplifying this will give me x over 2 alpha pi a negative x squared over 4 alpha squared t over t 3 over 2. So it's, it's not that complicated, okay? So what we have here now, this is this is what we are looking for. This is my gt, in other words. My gt is therefore given by x over 2 alpha squared root pi e negative x squared over 4 alpha squared t over 2. Okay, so therefore, what we have here, we have u x t equals to f t multiply with my g t. Now, look at, look at my g t here. So, I have given um, earlier on where g t is this equation here. Okay, now we have a convolution theorem here. We have a convolution theorem here. So, Ft multiply with my gt. x over 2 alpha square root 5 e negative x squared over 4 alpha squared t. Now, by the definition of convolution theorem, okay, what do we know of the convolution theorem? Convolution theorem is given that for F multiply with g, T is given by integration from 0 to T F tau G T minus tau D tau. So when you when I see T, this will become this will become tau. Now this T here will become T minus tau. So my solution is pretty much given by 0 to T F tau. This is the whole thing is g. So we have x over 2 alpha square root pi e negative x squared over 4 alpha squared. Now my t will be t minus tau over t minus tau d tau. Okay, don't forget d tau. Okay, so this is what you got the equation. 0 to t, f tau, e negative x squared over 4 alpha squared, t minus tau. That's all. Thank you.